Hello and welcome to Western Bartonshire Learning Campus. My name is Mr Clark and depending when you're tuning in, good morning, good afternoon, good evening or good night. Today I'm going to help you knock some maths out of the park and we are going to be looking at multiplying and dividing by ten, hundreds and thousands. Now, if you haven't done so already, go watch the, the video on our decimal number system which explains that our number system goes up in tens. Each thing, if, let's go back to it, units, 10 units make a 10, 10 tens make a 100, 10 hundreds make a 1000 and so on and so on and so on. So let's have a look at some questions and how this helps us tackle sums and problems like this. Let's go. So, first problem I've got is 47 times 10. 47. You'll see I've labelled up four tens, seven units. Now what happens to our numbers? We'd, so a lot of people come up to me and say, you just add a zero. Now that's going to get us stuck later on and we're going to start making mistakes if we use that logic. What happens to the number is it actually moves on a place value. Okay, so our units will move into the tens, the tens will move into the hundreds, etc, etc. So I've got 47. So what happens is that seven will move into our tens, that four tens will move into our hundreds, which I've run out of room for, but I'll squeeze it on the end. And then in our units, we've got, we put a placeholder because we no longer have any units there. So we have to fill the gap and you'll see it makes the number 470. And that is my final answer, 470. Now, the opposite happens when we divide a number. The numbers, instead of going to the left, are going to go to the right. Okay, so they're going to all shift along. It's as if you push a load of cardboard boxes and they're all going to move together. So, 360 divided by 10, I'm going to label up. Hundreds, tens, units. And we're dividing by 10. So, the number of zeros tells us how many places it's going to move. So if we're dividing by 10, so one place. So 300 will move down into the tens. The six will move into the units. And that zero will actually go into the tenths, but because it's just a zero and it's holding the place, it just disappears and we don't need to worry about it just now, which is great for us. Now, when I come on to my next problem, it's times a hundred. Now, when it's ten, we only move at one place. So ten's only got one zero, so you move at one place. One hundred's got two placeholders, two zeros, so we're going to move it two places. So I put the number here, 0 0.65. Now, if I want, actually, this can help us with money problems, weight problems, and all we have to do is put it simple. I'm going to turn this into money problem today. So that's 65 pence or 0 0.65, and we're times it by 100. So each number is going to move two places. And we'll start with my five. It's going to move one place into my tenths column, because you can see my decimal point, and then it's going to move another place into my units. Do you know what? To make it a bit easier on myself, I'm going to label this up first. Units, tenths, and I will put my hundreds column. Now, if that five has moved up two places, the six has to move up two places as well. One, it's in the tenths, moves into the units, then moves into my tens. Now I'm struggling for space again, and you can see that I've got my final result there. Now, because it's money, I can either write it 65 pound and just leave it like that, or if I want, I can add those two placeholders, that's not changing the value, that's just saying I've got no pence. Nice and simple. Now, if I get onto my thousands, you may have guessed it already, thousands have three zeros. So we're going to move it three places. Now this is a divide, so instead of going to the left, we're going to the right. So always check which way you're moving it. And we're going to move each number three places. So I'm going to start with the seven. I'm going to label this up, thousands, hundreds. Tens units, and I'm moving three places. One into the hundreds, seven moves into the tens, moves into the units. Now the good thing is everything else follows on. What comes after the units? Our decimal point. And then every other number is going to move along. Seven point three six five. And there's my answer. Once again, if that had been a problem that said 7,000 to make that kilograms, it wouldn't make any difference. We could just add that on on the end. That's exactly the same skills. So there you go. Hopefully that helps you tackle some of my problems. If you need to start easy on the cool watermelon questions, then get yourself up to those spicy hot ones as soon as you can. Catch you later, kiddos.